Growing up, I'd watch Nickelodeon nonstop. While I'd occasionally tune into Cartoon Network and sprinkled in some Disney too. I'm Jake Paul from Bizarre Park, and you're watching Disney Channel. None of these networks captivated me as much as Nickelodeon did. Spongebob, for the longest time, was my favorite cartoon. I understood why it was as popular as it was, I laughed at it every waking day of my life, and I still rewatch a handful of episodes any chance that I get. My point is, Spongebob was unique, and not a lot of Nicktoons got close to its popularity except for... And of course, the subject of this video, The Fairly Odd Parents. Despite its very, very frequent shortcomings, I love The Fairly Odd Parents. Watching Timmy Turner overcome his terrible life filled with obstacles such as his unintentionally neglectful parents, his mean babysitter, his crazed bully and teacher, I'm not a people person! I'm barely a person! Is this nigga serious? and various other aspects of his life that tormented him on a day-to-day -day basis helped me emphasize with him. And of course, his two fairies that helped make his childhood better by granting him wishes. The interesting thing about this show was despite the fact that it was largely self-contained, Fairly Odd Parents had a continuity. There was a set of rules for what Timmy could and couldn't wish for, and characters and settings frequently reappeared for closure. It wasn't super outlandish for Fairly Odd Parents to have action-based plots as well. Fairly Odd Parents has specials ranging from 45 minutes to an hour. They did about a couple of these per season, and for their budget, most were surprisingly great. Of course, I could mention how this show fell into seasonal rot and blah blah blah, but we're not here for that today. I want to talk about a certain episode that's still dear to my heart, even as an almost adult. The most popular, extensive, and widely regarded one-hour special of the Fairly Odd Parents runtime, Channel Chasers. If all goes well, this video will be uploaded on its birthday, so uh, happy 20th birthday, Channel Chasers. Alright, let's get into it. So, the episode starts off in a future setting. This is surprisingly action-packed and grim for the Fairly Odd Parents, but this section of the movie helps me realize why Danny Phantom took off the way it did. Timmy's two best friends, now adults, Chester and AJ, are trying to figure out a way to get back to the past. I always adore bad future segments of shows, and this one certainly doesn't fail to amaze me. Vicky, now the supreme ruler of the earth, I'm gonna be saying that a lot in this video, sends a future version of Timmy to the past in an attempt to prevent her from stopping it. The literal darker atmosphere and high tech designs prove further that this show is capable of telling a more serious story. Cut to the current timeline, Timmy Turner is as usual, doing Timmy Turner antics. Cosmo and Wanda are reluctant about this and feels dangerous, as imitating stuff on TV could result in Timmy hurting someone or him getting hurt himself. After all, why does the phrase don't try this at home even exist if not to prevent stuff like this? Timmy's a kid, he's gonna want to do crazy things with a power like magic, and this scene shows that he's too grounded in magic to realize that what he's doing is wrong. Quickly enough, Timmy gets a reality check from his parents' anger. Timmy breaks not only the house that his mom was about to sell, but his dad's office right as he was about to get a raise. Timmy's parents aren't the greatest people, but they try their hardest for their son as you'll see in this episode. And before the seasonal rot, they actually meant something to Timmy. They, along with Chester and AJ, were there to show that things weren't always so bad in the real world, and when he's not with his fairies, he can count on them. In this episode, however, his parents are humanized in the best way possible. They do have their usual goofiness, sure, but they learn by themselves and help Timmy learn a lesson. Speaking of Timmy, they confront him, banning him from getting addicted to this universe's Dragon Ball. And of course, he gets stuck with Vicky. From burning his comic books to torturing him like a supervillain, Vicky makes it her mission to treat Timmy horribly whenever she's around. She acts as the main antagonist character to Timmy in this movie, and if you noticed, at the beginning of the show she was just a mean babysitter, but over time she just become more and more evil. There's a scene for where the first time in the series, Timmy's parents suspect that Vicky is evil. After Timmy tries to explain it to them, they shrug it off and leave. Timmy decides that since he's banned from watching TV, he'll use magic to disobey his parents and go inside of the shows he's watching. Here's where the parodies begin. I'm not going to count all of them, but just ones that I think are important. 
I'll link a video that shows all the different parodies in the description. Timmy goes into a parody of the Jetsons, a parody of Rugrats, and a parody of Fat Albert. While Cosmo tries to pose as him in an attempt to get Vicky out of his hair while he goofs off inside of his favorite shows. Things just keep on getting worse for Timmy as Cosmo, being Cosmo, unintentionally exposes Timmy. One thing that you'll see on this special and throughout most of them is the writers do an excellent job as portraying Timmy as a kid who's still learning things. Abracatastrophe had Timmy learn that even if his parents tell white lies sometimes, they still love him. Fairy Idol showed Timmy that he should be more grateful to his fairies. His godparents sit him down and explain to him what will happen when he gets older. Timmy will eventually grow out of needing fairies and this revelation just further adds to his horrible day. In a quick visual gag that rubs more salt on the wound, the roof of Timmy's room explodes. His parents get even more angry with him, and he resolves to run away to TV by wishing he had another magical TV remote. Timmy wants to avoid everything he hates about the real world. His neglectful mom and dad who couldn't believe him if they tried, and his evil babysitter who's dead set on tormenting him for as long as his childhood goes on. Also, he runs away to TV because he wants to do everything in his power to avoid losing his fairies. Honestly, I feel kind of bad for Timmy. With a childhood as cruddy as his, his decision, while a bit rash, made a ton of sense to me as a child. Why should you have to deal with the harsh consequences of your childhood if growing up ain't worth half the battle? Remember the future versions of our cast from earlier? Well, since future Timmy makes it his mission to stop Vicky from becoming the supreme ruler of both Dimsdale and Earth, he goes back in time and follows Timmy into the various channels. But I sure hope that Viacom doesn't get too mad about this next part of the video. Okay, so now Timmy is traveling through various TV parodies of already existing shows. Again, I don't really have much to say other than the fact that they really put their all into these parodies. They recreated all of these art styles and general feels of said show in such a way that's extremely special and respectful. The Flintstones, Speed Racer, Peanuts, Scooby-Doo, Blue's Clues, Sesame Street, The Simpsons, Tom and Jerry, Looney Tunes, and of course, one of the most notable ones being Batman the Animated Series. I think it's really cool how Cosmo and Wanda both fill the role as Alfred, and Timmy is a parody of Robin. But he's a sparrow, I swear. This special just gets more and more creative by the second. Surprise, surprise, Timmy finds out that a masked man has been following him. And we know him as Timmy from the future. It feels so bizarre seeing an adult version of a cartoon character. Because most cartoon characters don't really grow up in the way that you think. The Fairly Odd Parents is for sure one of the first cartoons to break that curse. And I think that's special. And even worse, Vicky's also there to ruin things for him. I didn't bring this up earlier, but Vicky has a second remote that was from the first time Timmy escaped in the TV. So it's up to Timmy, his godparents, and future Timmy to stop Vicky from becoming an evil dictator. She chases them all throughout the various channels, and eventually they both reach the end of the channels. Channel 297. And in the meantime, they're on a credit scene of a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles parody. Wow! These credits are moving fast! They're animation credits! They go really fast because nobody cares about them! Probably one of my favorite art styles for the Fairly Odd Parents is in this section. I like the shading and highlights, and the line work being a darker shade of certain colors, it's just too bad that Butch's name is plastered all over it. Another thing I didn't touch too hard on was Timmy's future self. Him becoming a soldier for Vicky and trying to stop Chester and AJ from going back in time. He also tells Timmy growing up isn't so bad. Vicky catches up to them and defeats future Timmy. The worst part about this is that Timmy was growing to respect the adult version of him as they had bonded over the godparents-less memories that Timmy loved. So naturally, Timmy would be upset that Vicky took even the coolest adult in his life. Now that we're on the subject of adults in Timmy's life, I kinda wanna take a bit of a detour here. Timmy's parents are worried sick about him, and thus they question both Vicky's parents and Chester and AJ if they know anything about where Timmy went, or if Vicky's an evil babysitter. We get a funny moment out of this, Chester trying to explain to Timmy's parents that Vicky's truly evil, but his ankle bracelet keeps shocking him. The only one who actually succeeds is Vicky's sister Tootie. She tells Timmy's parents about Vicky being evil and has videos of her thrashing the Turner's house and trying to frame it as Timmy. Hearing about this, Timmy's parents go to the TV station run by Doug Dimondone in an attempt to find their son once and for all. 
back to Timmy, he finds out that the final channel is Mahomushi, the Dragon Ball Pokemon and Gundam parody that Timmy imitated at the beginning of this episode. I know I keep saying this, but the attention to detail in these parodies is so good, man. They faithfully recreate our styles that don't look out of place at all in the Fairly Odd Parents world, and it takes a lot of talent to do all of that. And to top it all off, this final fight is kind of a deep cut for 2004. For those of you that somehow don't know, it was Dragon Ball Z that got popular first in the US. This section of the episode is parrying the King Piccolo and Kid Goku fight from OG Dragon Ball. And they took their time and liberties in recreating this art style because, oh my god, honestly, it looks really close to Dragon Ball. I'm pretty impressed. Vicky even sports a King Piccolo-esque outfit with the muscles to match. It's pretty blessed and cursed at the same time, but Timmy looks exactly like Kid Goku. Mechs and Key Blast with silly parody names, lightsabers striking one another, anime tropes alike. This is honestly the best way that they could have ended this episode. Unfortunately, things are starting to look bleak for our pink-hatted bucktooth kid. Timmy realizes that since the remotes are powered by magic, the only way he'll be able to get to Vicky and get her to lose is by limiting the magic from her remote. Timmy tries to age himself using the remote and realizes that he'll have his fairies for a couple more years. And he ages himself up to 18, and by losing Cosmo and Wanda, Vicky becomes weaker from the remote. It's funny looking at this version of adult Timmy, considering that the first episode revolved around him losing his fairies because he wished to be an adult. The fairy taxi that comes for all fairy godparents once their kids reach age 18 comes back to take Cosmo and Wanda from Timmy, and they help turn him back into a kid. One thing that I appreciate about early Fairly Odd Parents is that even if Cosmo wasn't the brightest character ever, when it came down to it, he was willing to do all that he could to help those that were important to him. Not only here, but it was also shown that in Abra Catastrophe, when it came down to helping Timmy defeat Crocker, he pulled out all the stops. Stuff like this really makes him feel more like a family than a lot of other ep episodes of this show. And it also serves as a reminder that the show had a huge heart and loved its characters, understanding the importance of its bonds. Since Timmy's 10 again and has both remotes, he takes Vicky out of the show and sends her back to her room where it all started. Timmy saves the day and makes it out of Mahomushi in one piece. In this moment right here, our protagonist comes to a realization. A lot of the parents that were present in the shows that he was in either weren't around or were total idiots. His parents may not be the most perfect of the bunch, believe me, they've had their fair share of mistakes towards him. But they continuously try to help him become a better person because, well... We love you. This scene meant so much to me as a kid. I connected with Timmy because of the fact that we were both average kids, so seeing him learn to appreciate his parents despite their shortcomings helped me appreciate my parents for all they've done to me too. Timmy comes home and for the first time in the series, his parents believe him about Vicky for once. They find out that Vicky's been a crude, disgusting babysitter that's been nothing but a jerk to Timmy. And finally, fire her. Not. Timmy makes a very bold decision here. He pauses it and decides that he's willing to swallow his pride and be babysat by Vicky if it means to keep his godparents. At the very, very beginning of the show, Timmy only receives his godparents because of how Vicky and his teacher and parents treated him. If all that being gone meant that he wouldn't get to have Cosmo and Wanda anymore, Timmy wasn't willing to give them up just yet. He loves his godparents and realizes that they're more than just wish-granting objects for him to play with when he gets bored. At the end of the special, Timmy goes outside to bury a time capsule in his backyard so he can try to remember Cosmo and Wanda and all the things that meant a lot to him for as long as he can. The ending of this special sees a 30 year old Timmy finding his old time capsule and faintly remembering why those little fish in the bowl meant so much to him. One thing I didn't mention is how Vicky took a picture of Timmy looking so miserable next to his fish back when Timmy was in a lot of trouble, who at the time were Cosmo and Wanda. Once he grew, however, they became regular old fish. If you've forgotten, once a kid loses their fairies, their memory gets completely wiped. But deep down, in a show like The Fairly Odd Parents, a god kid as crazy and beloved and as outlandish as Timmy can't simply forget the amazing childhood he had. And of course, Cosmo and Wanda can't forget either. Adult Timmy hired an advanced robot, Vicky, to babysit his future kids, and the cycle continues. This also comes with the assumption that Jorgen also ended up wiping Timmy's memory of Vicky, 
So he at least respected Timmy enough to wipe the bad memories of Timmy's childhood as well. It's a bit of a bittersweet ending and really isn't my most ideal ending for the show, but it works exceedingly well and I gotta give the team props for that. That about wraps up the Fairly Odd Parents Channel Chasers. Channel Chasers wasn't the finale to Fairly Odd Parents. While I enjoyed season 5 and a bit of season 6, I could definitely understand if someone didn't want the show to go on past this point. I think there honestly could have been a better finale than both this and Wishology. Perhaps in a hypothetical world we'd get that Fairly Odd Parents movie. No, not you. As a near adult, I look back on this special as a testament or love letter to my childhood self. The people and things you like aren't always going to be there forever, and growing up isn't something to always be afraid of or detest. This entire special explored Timmy slowly coming to realize that his fairies won't be around for all of his life, and one day he'll just have to move on. I always think about the past, and I'm nostalgic for it because I'm under the belief that things were better back then, and I had more enjoyment in my life as a kid. But this episode of The Fairly Odd Parents taught me that you're not always going to be stuck in your childhood. But Timmy's parents were obviously around for long enough to shape him into the adult that he became, and he himself acknowledges that it's only because of them that he turned out such a great adult. I'm going to be going to college soon, and I've recently been re-watching parts of this show for some closure on my childhood. I feel like this is something I needed to watch before I go off into the real world because it reminds me of where I came from. It definitely is one of my favorite cartoon episodes ever. My all time favorite is and will forever be Abra Catastrophe, but this one is definitely in second place. The amount of love put into this is astounding and it just goes to show that despite suffering hard from seasonal rot, Fairly Odd Parents was good for almost 6 seasons and that's all that matters for me. For a while, I thought this was my favorite cartoon. It's not hard to see why. With episodes like this, I feel I start to reconnect with the show. Since today is Channel Chaser's birthday, and if we equate that to real time, it's been 20 years since Timmy had fairies. I don't need to talk about the later seasons because I really don't care. 6 and 7 had a handful of episodes I'd like, not including Fairly Odd Baby, but like Spongebob, it's only important for me to discuss the things that made me fall in love with the show. Not only was Timmy learning life lessons from his magical wish-granting godparents, but it was something that makes me glad to live the life I'm living. I'll always love this show, and nothing further exemplifies that than this video. How they managed to make a one-hour special that pushed the limits of the cartoon is a feat that I think only true talents can do, all the while making a great character-driven story. Thank you, Fairly Odd Parents, for being a big part of my life. I'll be sure to tell my kids about you. Oh, son of a bit, bit, uh, son of a bit, bit, son of a bit, 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 b